Hey all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Taylor, and today we're going to be discussing some very exciting announcements that Apple made at WWDC surrounding gaming, and I'm gonna show some of those announcements off today in this video. Now, Apple has a reputation of putting games second when it comes to their Macs. We have Macs now with amazing hardware capabilities with that Apple Silicon, and it's just begging to take advantage of today's games. Unfortunately, Apple has been pretty slow at improving the Mac gaming experience. Steam for Mac was introduced in 2010 and still has a pretty sparse catalog of games to choose from compared to the Windows counterpart. We're just now seeing titles such as No Man's Sky and Resident Evil Village, which is very good by the way, released for the Mac in the past year or so. These are certainly nice games to have, but even with those games, we just don't see much in the world of gaming for Mac or just don't get games anywhere near as fast as we get them for Windows. And all that might change with Apple's new announcements at WWDC, so we're gonna take a look at those, but before we take a look, this video is not sponsored, and any links in the description are not affiliate links. I'm going to be using beta software today, which is very technical and has many avenues for things to go very wrong. So y'all don't use this on any machine that you depend on for your financial well-being. Use this stuff responsibly and at your own risk. Okay, let's get into it. So what announcement am I talking about? Well, Death Stranding, of course. Thanks, Kojima-san. No, I'm kidding, but Apple did announce Death Stranding is coming to Mac, so if you're into that, then you're gonna be very happy. I'm talking about Mac OS Sonoma and Apple's new game porting toolkit. Sonoma is Apple's new OS that has, for the first time, introduced a dedicated gaming mode to Mac OS. When this is enabled, it prioritizes your CPU and GPU for gaming, and it lowers latency on devices such as AirPods and game controllers by doubling the Bluetooth sampling rate. This is one of the new exciting features for gaming coming to Macs. The other is geared towards game developers, and it's the Game Porting Toolkit. You can download it now as long as you use the latest beta version of Xcode and it's designed to allow developers to test out how their Windows games will run on Mac before even writing a single line of code. It is also supposed to simplify the process of converting game shaders and graphics code to take advantage of Apple Silicon, this all according to Apple. I have no way to verify this as I'm not a game developer. You can use it right now on Ventura or Sonoma Beta, and it's pretty awesome. Let's see it in action with Diablo 4. Hi there, here I am inside macOS Ventura and I have my game porting toolkit mounted here so we're good to run the game and this is the Blizzard client. I'm just going to go ahead and appear offline there. This client is not the macOS Blizzard client. This is the Windows Blizzard client as indicated by the Windows buttons in the top right corner. You'll notice they look like Windows 10. It's emulating it, which means we have all these games available to us up here. So with Diablo, we're just gonna hit play. And yes, I am on the Apple Studio display. Diablo 4 works just fine with that. And here we've arrived in game. You can see that I'm able to walk around with my character. Now, if you start the game and it freezes when you first load in, don't panic, just restart the game and it should load in. I also have performance metrics going up here in the corner. It's probably too small for you to see, but it says that our resolution is 2560 by 1440. We're running at 60 Hertz and we're getting about 46 frames per second right now as we're walking around. It's going down to about 45, 46 frames per second, which is pretty good. We went down to 42 frames per second. And because we are connected to the Apple display, sound and everything is working because we're on an Apple device. So anything connected to this Apple computer is going to be compatible, including the Apple Studio display. And it sounds and looks gorgeous. So let's go ahead and take a look at the settings here because I think this is going to surprise you. We have pretty much everything set to the maximum. So if I scroll down in graphics, there is a resolution percentage of 100. We're not using FSR. And uh, we just have the foreground FPS set to the maximum 400. We're not reaching 400, but we just have it set to the max. And look at this, everything is set to high here. This is all high settings. 
And if we go back in game, this is a 5K display, but of course we're not running at native 5K. We're running at the down sim, the downscale resolution that Mac OS sets, which is 2560 by 1440. So 1440p, all high settings, and we're getting 45, 46 frames per second. That is very good performance considering that we are going through this wine compatibility layer. And those, there's some stutters, but that's kind of network lag. But it is, for the most part, very smooth. And the experience so far, I've played a lot of Diablo on this machine. And it is just super fun. What an amazing game. So how does this work? Well, Game Porting Toolkit isn't using any magic or anything new. It uses Wine under the hood, which has been available for many years now and is popular in the Linux community for establishing a software compatibility layer with Windows executable files or .exes. It's basically an emulator that allows these exes to run in macOS, which means games, which means you can run any game on macOS now, right? Well, not exactly. There are some downsides to be aware of. First, Ventura isn't as compatible with this as Sonoma Beta is, which is understandable considering the gaming-focused optimizations that Sonoma introduces, which means some games just won't work in Ventura. In fact, I can only get Diablo 4 to work in Ventura. You can install Steam, but I wasn't able to get it to work either, and I suspect this is more possible with Sonoma. You can try this out for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below for the Mac Gaming Community Wiki page, which has instructions on how to set everything up. This is a very technical process, so please read it carefully. Some things that tripped me up in the process was that you need to keep Game Porting Toolkit mounted in order to install and run games. Also, be sure to pay close attention to the directory where you install things. The directory I used was slash my dash game dash prefix. It's the default directory and you have to use this for starting games via terminal or in your automator scripts. If your directory is slightly off, you won't be able to start your games and the error messaging inside the terminal isn't going to be all that helpful to you. The install time for Game Porting Toolkit is very long. It took a little over 40 minutes to install using my M1 Max and it used a lot of CPU power. The technical barrier is a compromise and one that I suspect will get easier to manage as the software matures. This is a huge step in the right direction for increasing PC game compatibility with Mac and hopefully means we'll get to see AAA titles appear much faster for the Mac, if not on the same release day as Windows. Wouldn't that be just amazing? Would that be a reality with Mac OS Sonoma? We'll just have to see. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next one.